Hey guys, Craig Zuckerman here, Master Pilates instructor and pain specialist. If you have tennis elbow or golfer's elbow, maybe you just have general wrist pain, then this video is for you. I'm gonna show you some exercises and some stretches to quickly get you out of pain. Plus, I'll show you some of the things that may have gotten you injured in the first place, and they're gonna surprise you. Okay guys, before we get into the exercises and stretches and such, I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about rehabbing an injury in general. When you're doing rehab exercises, you may feel some pain or discomfort. Now, I'm not talking about the sharp shooting pain that's debilitating, because obviously something may not be going right. So check your form, check your range of motion, how wide or how big of a motion you are doing with the exercises, and maybe reduce that range of motion. And that should reduce also the pain that you're feeling during the exercise. But it's normal to feel some discomfort afterwards or even during the exercise because a lot of times when we injure something it's because our body didn't have the strength in the surrounding muscles of the area that's been injured so today we're talking about the wrist so as i'm exercising if i feel some discomfort through the wrist even up into the forearm and right into here then that can be a normal thing because most likely it's the fact that I didn't have enough strength in these muscles to handle the pressure of my golf swing repetitively or my tennis swing, my backhand, that repetitive nature of doing those actions. There's a lot of force that comes upon the wrist and the forearm and those muscles get strained and little micro tears can start to happen. So when you start to exercise those muscles again or start to do it for the first time, maybe you just got out on the tennis court and just started playing tennis and never thought to, to really strengthen the muscles that you're using using over and over again in the sport. Well, then when you start to exercise them, the brain is still fearing that you're doing something wrong to it. It'll send some pain signals to your brain. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa hey, hey, what's going on here? But as you continue to do the exercises, a lot of times those pain signals will subside. They'll back off. So you'll notice in rep three or four, maybe that initial pain signal calms down. You may also find the next day that you may feel some discomfort in the area. Again, that's normal. When we exercise a muscle, we can have a pain cycle of anywhere from up to one to three days afterwards. Now, this shouldn't be a debilitating pain. We're like, oh my God, I can't move my wrist. So that's not what I'm talking about. But just some general soreness and discomfort as you move it. Now you notice the more you do the exercises and with time, this should back down where you're not having that same pain reaction because now the muscles are starting to get stronger. Plus your brain starts to go, oh wait, hey, you're helping me out. You're doing something here that I need to help myself so I can get out of pain and I can prevent this injury from happening. So bottom line here, don't fear the pain, okay? Take a deep breath. You start feeling that. No, you're doing something good for yourself. You are helping yourself. Follow those little guidelines. If it feels a little too much pain, reduce your range of motion and maybe cut back on weight if you're using weight or the number of reps until you get a little stronger and then you can increase your reps and such like that, okay? So just know that moving into this, we're working things and you're doing good stuff for your body. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about what we should be doing to help out. Now, what's happening in tennis elbow and golfer's elbow? There are muscles, so as I move my arm, you can see the muscles moving there, and as I do it this way, you can see these moving. And they go all the way down and connect back here. So what happens is there's too much strain on those muscles, especially if there's a ballistic action, so something hitting. So I'm tightening that muscle, and then bam, something hits it, and like that. It'll start to tear at its connection. Where it connects right around the elbow area, it'll start to have little tears. And those little micro tears can start to calcify, or they start to scar. You can get little lumps, and it's just really painful. So that's kind of what's happening. You're getting these tears. Golfer's elbow tends to be on the inside from like hitting the dirt or just that swing into the, into the ball. Tennis, a lot of time, it's from the, the wrist action, either in service or backhands a lot of time. It's working with that. So that's how you can get that pain. Um, and you may have some discomfort in the wrist as a whole. Now, if you're checking into this just because you have wrist discomfort, this works with that because these muscles that are back here that have problems during tennis elbow and golfer's elbow, then go all the way down and attach to the wrist. So the things I'm gonna, some tips I'm gonna give you in the exercise are gonna help also if you're having general wrist discomfort and pain. All right, so let's get into the exercises. Now I'm gonna use 
a three pound weight today, but for you, if you're just starting off, you know, there's all sorts of levels of strength here. So you may just want to start off with these exercises using no weights at all and see how you do. And then you can start stepping up the weight one, two, three, even up to five pounds while you're doing these exercises. Now we're not looking at barely being able to get four or five, you know, reps through. We're looking to get more in the vicinity of 15, 20 reps, you know, as we get going with some days here. First couple of days, I get it. Eight to 12, that's still good. Take a rest, give yourself a little break so you can get past that pain cycle. Um, but we're building up attrition here. We're trying to build up where these muscles can handle more stress over longer periods of time. And for that, then we want to do more reps, less strain to the muscle. Make sense? All right. So before we even get into those weights, there are some warm ups we can be doing. That's what we're going to start off with. First, flexing the fingers out and squeezing my wrists. Flexing the fingers, squeeze. Flex squeeze so i'm keeping my wrists generally straight flexing i'm not doing this kind of thing or that kind of thing i don't want to do that just keep a nice straight really reach out all the way squeeze the fist reach out all the way squeeze the fist you're going to do about 10 of these guys because they're the warm-ups then we're going to do wrist circles now you can do open hand wrist circles or closed hand we're going to go both directions now i'm not moving my elbow around i'm moving just the wrist area around after about 10 circles that direction, I'm gonna reverse and do 10 circles the other direction. You may feel some clicks and pops when this is going on, and that's generally because if we have some tension in the muscles, if we have some tension in the wrist because of these muscles spasming, holding tension due to the injury, then it'll cause some of the ligaments and stuff to pop around and click, and that's okay. It should calm down. As long as it doesn't hurt, then you're still doing, you're doing good stuff here. After you get the ankle circles and the fingers, now we're going to go to the exercises. The key here is that we want to work the wrist in every single direction. Now, I'm going to put it right here on my leg. Uh, I like that because then everything else rests. It just supports here and only my arm or only my wrist is working. And I'm going to go down and then up, down and up. Now, if you're looking from the side, that's all I'm doing. Just going all the way down range, all the way up. I can do this on both wrists too. If you have both wrists are causing a problem, go ahead and hit both wrists. But I'm going down and up, down and up. Anywhere from 8 to 12 the first couple of days, then you can move it up to the 15 to 20 range. But remember, this wrist doesn't take too much stress, so don't stress it out doing too many reps also. Then I'm going to reverse it. Now, this is key. Everything I do, I do both sides of the joint in all directions. By working the joint front and back, side to side, working every muscle in every direction, I do what I call counter muscle balancing. This is key to rehabbing a joint. When you do this counter muscle balancing work and you work things from all sides, then all the musculature works together to stabilize the joint, releasing the pain, releasing the stress to the muscles. So it's very important that you don't just do one of these exercises and then go off to work, but you get all four of these in. After I've done this way and I've done that way, getting eight to 10, 12 maybe, then I'm going to go this guy. I'm on this side and I come up. This is one of the weirder ones. It's like you're taking a drink, but your wrist is down here and you just lift up and you drop it down. Again, I'm doing that full range of motion all the way down, all the way up. Now I'm going to do less of those. So if I'm doing 12 of the other, I'm probably going to get in eight of those because the side motion isn't something we use too often. We have smaller muscles in here and we don't want to overly stress them. Flip it over to the strangest of all. And I'm going to go sideways up, down, up, down. These are nice and slow, not popping and releasing, popping and releasing. I'm controlling the motion all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. And that completes all of the exercises that I want to do. All directions, warmed up, in circles, also work the fingers because the digits work through here too. After that, now I can go into my stretches. So first stretch, and these can get a little strange, but the important part is that you feel it. Now, I have my arm forward a lot because I'm very flexible here. You may only be back here, and you may have to just stay in this back area, and you feel that stretch. I just want you to feel it without it hurting. It should be a nice stretch, not a painful stretch. So the big important thing is this soft area. This is facing forward, so I really stretch this out. My shoulders relax down. I can keep nice posture too. Why not work on that same time? And you're going to hold the stretch for 35 to 45 seconds. After you do that, we're going to flip it around the other way. 
So now my wrist is kind of pushing down. I don't want to slam it down. I may have to go behind me a little bit to release some of that pressure. But the key here is this right here. See me rotating that? So I'm squeezing into my armpit, kind of rotating that wrist around. If you don't get as rotated around as me, that is fine. If you're just more like here, that's totally normal. But you're gonna rotate around much to get this soft point. Then you'll really feel this guy stretch. So for a tennis elbow, this is big. And you're gonna use that. And you can also pull it up if you want more of a stretch. And you're holding this guy for 35, 45 seconds. Letting it stretch out, you should feel it, but it should not be painful. There can be some discomfort, but it shouldn't hurt, hurt. Like, oh my God, because ah, then your brain doesn't know the difference between you hurting yourself and if you're doing something good for yourself in this situation. So let it nicely stretch. So those are the two stretches. So you've gotten both ways here. And then you've gone there to stretch that guy out. Now, tennis elbow, you know, that gets a little, or golfer's elbow, because it's this inside stretch. So that's a much harder guy to kind of get to. Um, and, and I don't, you know, this gets some of the musculature on there. I know they also show some stretches like this. So this guy may feel a little bit, if you're tennis elbow, oh, I'm sorry, golfer's elbow, and you're on the inside, you may try this guy out, may feel a little bit better than the way I'm showing it. Whatever feels the best stretch to you in that area is going to be the better way to go. I like these two, but I know in therapy, they like to do these directions also. So those are your stretches. You're holding them for 45, 35 seconds each. Now you want to do this daily. That's why we're not doing a really strenuous workout on a wrist. We're going to do this daily so that we build up that attrition. And with each day, you should feel things get better, especially after the second or third day, you should notice things are, 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 are progressing. And after two to four weeks, you should really notice that this pain is pulled away to the part that you're playing tennis and, and really not having any problems with it. Uh, there are some things you can use to help out along the way because we want to keep these muscles nice and warm so that they're flexible and because if they're really tight, that's when they tear at their connective tissue. So we want to keep them more loose and relaxed and to do that, to keep them warm is a good thing. One thing I highly suggest is buying just some cheap old wristbands, those, those old 1980s wristbands. I'll throw some things in the description so you can see them throw a picture up here so you know what I'm talking about. And I take them and I put them up here so that they keep this muscle warm. I'll even buy the big long ones and put them up here so they keep this whole area warm and those muscles relaxed. And another thing you can do, they do have these cuffs. I'll also show you those and put into the description. And what it does, it has a little like pillow area in it. And you want that pillow area, if you have tennis elbow, to be in the belly of the muscle. If you have golfer's elbow, in the belly of the muscle here. And so that it's tightened down. When you create that force downward there, then the pull on the muscle is shifted from back here on the ligament to up here. So it, it de-stresses where you're getting the little micro tears uh, in the connective tissue. So that's why those bands are helpful and they're good aids to use if you just can't stop playing tennis while you're trying to rehab this injury you have or you just can't stop golf because you, you just got to play. And I understand that. So those are some other things to throw in there to use while you're playing. The exercises are great to do after a match, to do before a match. In the beginning, even the first week or so, it would be great to do them more than once a day. Do them two, three times a day, but just lessen your reps. I'd rather you do less reps and do it more times a day to kind of build up that strength in your forearm. Put all that together and you're going to go a long way to rehabbing your golfers or tennis elbow or even just general wrist pain. Now, here are a couple of surprising things that may be adding to your pain or why you're having the pain in the first place, even though you think it's hidden just from tennis, but it, other things you may be doing may be causing it to get worse. First thing, the way we sleep. Now, there's this weird thing we'll do sometimes when we sleep. We kind of have this crab arm under here. And, and this position compresses or puts into a prolonged stretch the muscles around the wrist and cause a lot of pain. So a little, you know, it's hard to know if you're doing this. Although once I found out about this, I kept waking up and finding myself doing this. I was like, what the heck? You know, because I didn't know we did this. Um, you can buy, hey, you know, like a, a wrist brace that they use for a carpal tunnel and wear it at night. Just don't have it too tight so that you can't put yourself into that position. Another thing is watch if you're somebody who likes to do, uh, if you're, if you work out with weights, when you're pulling that weight, don't sit there with the heavy weight and be pulling like this. Now we're doing this here as an exercise, which is a couple pounds, but if you're doing this with 50, 35, 45 pounds and all this works coming into your wrist, 
that's not a good thing. Second thing, if you're doing things with cables and you're pulling the cables down or anything like that, watch that the cable pull isn't happening from your wrist sideways. So the idea here is we don't want large amounts of weight and our wrist creating the action. One, we're cheating out our bigger global muscles around here that we're trying to work out by doing all this funky stuff with our wrists. So the key here is just make sure your wrist comes straight out, it is controlled, it is held in that position when anytime you're lifting any kind of weights or doing any kind of cable or even band systems at home, the straightness of the elbow is key to preventing injury or straightness of the elbow. I don't know my body parts. Um, the straightness of the wrist is key to keeping it from being injured. Yoga is another one of those things that can put a lot of stress on, on your wrists. And there are some things like uh, some great teachers out there will have you put your hand on a block. Doing push-ups can create a lot of stress too. So getting little push-up bars or my little cheat, I actually do my push-ups. You know, I'll just take the weights and I'll do my push-ups like that so I don't so I don't hurt the wrists. So you throw all that together and and you have a complete way of rehabbing your injury and preventing it from happening again. So I'm Craig Zuckerman with Z-Line Fitness, helping you feel better, look better, and perform better.